You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast on Digital Stream Radio. All you can do is live your best life and speak your truth. That's all that matters. Hey, everyone. You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey. Good evening. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Oh, we're singing tonight. Are you I'm, feeling good? I'm feeling fabulous. <laughs> I'm, you know, it's uh, it's August, sadly to say. Not sadly. I didn't even realize it was August. And because it, it's that already means that August. next month is September. And it's going to be cooler and I won't be hot and sticky. Yeah, I know. But my AC is still going to be going. That's so. true. So I'll be cold here, <laughs> but I'll be better outside. But, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited because I know that, um, you know, we're approaching a new season. It's one of my favorite, fall. Mm-hmm. And uh, But um, it's kind of disheartening because I know all of the chores that come with that. Mm picking up leaves and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's but like I've been out over. weeding every day this summer. We've had so much like great rain yeah. that the and the garden is growing so well, but it also means that all the weeds are also flourishing. Mm-hmm. So there are plenty of chores to do in summer. And it's hot. I mean, I'm trying to be super grateful because I know winter is coming and I don't I don't want to begrudge a second of this heat because I know I will miss it. Oh, I'll I know. It a lot. It'll come with a fury that, you know, of a thousand <laughs> hundred men or something or women or whatever you want to identify as. Um, but oh, you no. mean winter? <laughs> yeah. Old, old it winter. Old man winter. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, but it's good. It's good. August did. It does feel like it crept up on me. I couldn't believe today was the first as I was uh, doing some paperwork for work. But I think it's good. I mean, I can literally remember thinking, oh, it's almost June and now it's almost August. So it just reminds me to like live in the moment. I think I, we, I spend too much time thinking about the next six weeks or yeah. like six weeks from now or six weeks ago. And then you miss the time, right? In front they of already you. have back to school stuff out. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's like chill. It's I'm like, trying really hard not to go. Well, some schools are starting. My cousin just posted back to school pictures. She's in Atlanta and school. I think school started today. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm, just crazy though. It's like, we haven't like, we're not even like, done with summer yet and you're already seeing back to school stuff yeah. it's like it went from july 4th celebrations right. and flags to like books and, and pens and i know and i haven't and been to target yet all all my mom friends are like chomping at the bit especially my friends who have kids going into school for the first time it's a bit all the chatter all the mom um text groups that i'm in mm-hmm. and chat groups and all of this stuff everything is about uniforms and um the big thing the big thing because we have preschool that starts some kids start well before they're three is are they going to be potty trained in time for school yeah are the they gonna ha- of- like i mean people are stressed out and i i should I, I shouldn't be stressed. I'm not stressed. Emery is running around doing what he wants when he wants. And whether I want him to or not, he's going to do it when he's ready. So That's I'm right. trying really. I mean, he was naked a second ago. He's like, oh, I'm naked. He's doing a naked dance in the house. Before <laughs> but I, I mean, left. you encourage him to, to or remind him mm-hmm. that, you know, you are potty trading, my little friend. Yeah. Go to so, the bathroom. So go to the bathroom. But, yeah. you know, if he doesn't, then he doesn't. But at least is in the back of his mind. Yep. Like, I should. Right. So the point is that everybody is in a flurry. So even though even though we still have a month before school starts, people have been stressed out for the la- at least the last three weeks and hounding. A friend of mine was like, I called the school. They said they're sending out the list tomorrow. It should be in the mail tomorrow because we get a, a back to school list. Everybody wants to know who the teacher is. Everybody wants to know what the uniform is. Yeah. And I mean, also, I, it, it makes sense because right now all the sales are going on for the stores to get uniforms on sale. Well, I think in two weeks they're going to have that tax-free Oh, I forgot week, all about that. Uh, in where it, anything less than $100, mm-hmm. you can buy tax-free, tax-free for that one week. Yeah. You know? I never remember a tax-free rate week because, I, I mean, I think it works the best when you're buying big ticket. Yeah, items. like sneakers and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one thing to remember, too, is that our shopping experience is about to change drastically. Oh, yeah. Starting today. Today, the bags. So, yeah. So, they're either charging you uh, 10 cents per bag. Uh-huh. Uh, in Connecticut, they passed a law. Uh, and hopefully, by 2021, I believe, they're going to be banning bags altogether. Altogether. 
Um, so take, yeah, now if you walk in, you get charged ten cents to to take one of the plastic bags. So I'm I'm used to that. A couple of the stores that I shop at, like um, Price Right, and I think Aldi even. Aldi might even not even have bags, but a couple of places that I shop at already do a charge for bags. So I'm already in the habit of bringing bags. The 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 thing that I'm more concerned with is uh, what well, I should say that I was concerned with first was I do my grocery pickup from Walmart and I just I've already been annoyed by how many bags they use. Sometimes there's one item in the bag. So I was thinking, like, how are they going to fix that? And the answer is that when you pull up your car, you have to have your bags ready in the trunk or else they're just going to put the groceries loose in your trunk or charge you for the bags. And I was like, OK, I already have the bags. I had been pulling up with the bags and making them put um, the multiple plastic bags into the travel bags. So this is going to be great. I mean, you have another option, too. I mean, why don't they just say, hey, you can buy these reusable bags right. and we'll have them ready for you as well. Like, they don't have but to then be the you'd plastic have to ones. Do, but that's the point. But then you'd have to do that every time because you grocery pick up every week. I'm not going to buy new reusable bags Can you bags exchange? Every bag. Like, once you buy them, yeah. is there, like, an exchange program? That's not program? what the plan is. The oh, plan is... Suck. That's not what the plan is. The <laughs> plan is that all of your groceries will be loose in the crate, and either you have your reusable bags ready in your trunk, and they will transfer them into your trunk, or they're just going to transfer the loose grocery bags, I mean, the loose groceries into your trunk, and then you deal with it when you get home. Now, what I was getting to with uh, my second thing uh, around these plastic bags is less about getting the plastic bag from the store and more about how I'm going to deal with like diapers and all the little things that you usually like how many times you empty out a pot like the the ends of meat or whatever into, plastic into a plastic bag first tie it up and then drop it in the garbage right so that your whole house doesn't smell like whatever well if you need plastic bags go to a puerto rican's house because you know they're sitting under the sink well that's where mine yeah. are right now so i've been hoarding <laughs> the plastic bags black people have all the bags that are underneath mm -hmm. their sink and it starts with one bag and then when that one gets too full then you've got another bag so you've just got like giant bags of plastic bags everywhere it's a whole it's a whole thing so I'm I'm concerned about what I'm going to do instead. And I think I'll use, someone made a, a suggestion to use from the dollar store. They have the little doggy bags. Mm -hmm. And that might be the cheapest, the cheapest set of little tiny bags. Because they, like they have biodegradable doggy bags. Are they at the dollar store? I'm not sure if they're at the dollar mm -hmm. store, but I know they have them. Yeah. Well, I looked into biodegradable bags for the trash and they are super expensive. I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. So I, I don't I don't know what the next step is. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. It's either that or we're going to have to just start taking all of our organic food and, and start composting. Composting. Ugh. So that we don't have to throw all that kind of stuff. Like, you know. But you you can't do, like, bones and stuff in the composting bin, right? No. It's a Can whole, you do you rice? Learn, I mean, You have to learn all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. And there's, like, a difference between green stuff and meat stuff. And mm -hmm. it's a whole... It's a whole world. That's why I haven't gotten involved. My friends across the street compost. I thought for a while about uh, giving them stuff to put in their compost bin, but I think that it's too much. You yeah. know, like you have to, you're, they've probably set up their bin to accommodate their family and there it's a whole it's an art so it's I'm a whole living involved. situation yes. and then you know you and they go, have chicken and they have a garden but you also have to go thing. out there in the winter time yeah, and, and spin turn it. the yeah. barrel and because now they you don't, don't have, have a barrel to. they don't have a barrel so they're out there with a pitchfork like flipping compost i'm not about that life yet i haven't yeah. reached that that marker <laughs> I, i'm like i get i got um I've got solar panels on my house. I drive an electric car, but I'm like not at the level of composting Speaking yet. of that, what? I made an appointment to meet with your Ooh. guy on August 12th. Oh, wait till you meet him. He's Tuesday. awesome. He's so awesome. He's going to come on Tuesday and we're going to get together and figure out nice. the logistics and see if it works. See if it works for, for you. Yeah, that's so. amazing. I'm waiting. Actually, I called him the other day. I was like, dude, what's going on? Turn it on. Turn it on. We're like running out of time. August is almost over. This is when all the good sun is. Now I feel like an old man. Like, like good rain, good yeah. sun, good the good side of the house. Like this is the time for the good sun. I need you to turn on the panels. What is going? So on? So what's going on? With that I don't Have know. There's some said? delay. There's some delay. There's so many people involved. There's some delay from yeah. someone. I mean, uh, you the have city to have... or the something. So 
So between the company that's installing your panels, the electric company that's、yep. going to be putting in the meter, and the city who approves the it, the city,、all. yeah, it's just a, it's a, a big thing. It's so, a lot. So、yeah. we're still waiting. I I was hopeful that it would happen before I left so that we'd get to use it. But whenever it happens, it's going to be good. So、yeah. I'll try to be patient. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome everyone back to the Breezy Moms podcast. It's <laughs> Thursday. You know that we're doing our thing. We get lost in tangents, and I love doing this because that's how we do. Right. And、uh, and you know, Candice is the hostess with the mostest. So, Candice,、um, I have a question for you. I'm listening. How are your amazing boys? The boys are good. Well, when besides I left, being naked, right? I was just gonna say when I left the house, Emery was running around naked, living his best life.、Uh, they are. They're good. They're really good. I don't have. I don't have. Too many real stories about them this week. It's been kind of a low key, a, as low key as it can be, <laughs> given who they are and and how we act. But、um, the most exciting thing was we held a graduation at daycare. This I week saw that because they look so cute. The three little there. I have three boys in my program, and they are all going to preschool in the fall. So it's a huge turn. It, it felt like it's a huge marker for them, whether they recognize it or not. They are into going to big kids school. Like we've done a couple things. We we went to um we went to a local elementary school, not theirs, but a local one, and had lunch during the summer. The city provides lunch for ever for like kids under eighteen, and we were at the library right across the street. And so to save time and effort and money, we went in and had free lunch at the school. Which is amazing, by Which the way. Which is really amazing,、uh, because a lot of people don't realize that you know one of the the summertime is one of the most opportunistic times for children to forget one to eat、uh, or to not have、yeah. the resources、uh, or parents not have the resources to feed their kids,、um, and so school programs who yeah, do so- this. The point、amazing. is that lots of kids get most of their meals from school. That's right.、And、so during the summertime, if they're not in school, then、um, food is scarce, and that's why they have programs like the backpack, the food backpack program, where they identify kids who might need. And then on Friday, they fill. It's not. I, I realized a couple years ago, it's not actually a backpack, but it's a. It's like a plastic bag full of food, anything from ramen to. Are they going、like, to charge you ten cents now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the plastic. Probably、bag. they'll probably find some other way, or、yeah. make the kids bring their backpack. Yeah, but、um, they put some food in in their bag that's supposed to help them get from you know Friday afternoon until Monday morning when they're coming back in for breakfast. And what's crazy is that the next step of that is not only is that food. If that child is in need, it's helping them, but it might also be helping the rest of the family. Like,、um, I've shared a bowl of ramen noodles before. Like, you you do what you must. So, hey, listen, I've, anyway, I've had to deal with eating popcorn, yeah, for dinner, <laughs> yes.、Uh, you know, it、One、happens. One slice of bread, it happens. So, so、uh, I'm really glad that New Haven has this program and that it's it's and it, it's open for kids up to 18.、Mm-hmm. So it's not just little kids. And so anyway, we took it. We took advantage in the best. The way the best way that I can say that took advantage of this program, and and paired it with a trip to the library because it was right across the street, and what that meant was that we went into the school. The, these little three year old, almost three year olds, are walking through the big hallways. They got to sit in the big lunch room. At they got to stand in like queue in line to go and get the the、Breakfast、lunch and stuff. It, yeah, the lunch like see the lunch lady who. I forgot that lunch ladies are still wild. There's like only one juice, only one banana. <laughs> like it's just like we call them Marshall、sure. Mary. Yes. Oh my God. We weren't sure what time lunch was being served, and、uh, and I asked someone, and she said, "Oh no, she's not going to give it to you at eleven fifty eight. It don't start till twelve o'clock. Like there's no fudging with the lunch ladies." And I. I guess they have to be. If you're dealing with three, four hundred kids every single day, three times、yeah. a day, I get it.、Um, but it is, it is a little bit jarring, given that I have four three year olds, and we're just like, "Hey, can we have a juice? Like, we could use a milk too,"、um, and we need an extra second. Like, we need a second because they're only three and they don't really know how to hold it, and I'm trying to hold everything for it, and nobody has any patience for anything. So、uh-huh. it was a lesson all around for all of us that. And makes me、um, feel good knowing that our preschool, the kids are in an area like the preschool classes are in their own area. They're sort of、uh, isolated or separate from the rest of the big school as they're learning to be in school. You know、yeah. what I mean? Lunch is brought into their classroom, so you you're like in the school, but you're not getting trampled by all the big kids. So 
Well, it's, that's cool. It's a thing. It's a thing. Anyway, bringing back to the graduation. So yes, I had please. three kids, three kids who are graduating from my program. And a couple of weeks ago, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we did a graduation? And then I saw another provider actually d- did one. And so I was like, okay, it's possible <laughs> we can do it. And still, I've, I have been, I'm, whenever I have some kind of idea, I uh, get, confused or feel a little bit overwhelmed or whatever. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. It's too much to take on in my last week. Right. And instead I just went right onto Amazon and I found the cutest little black cap and gowns for them. I and saw them. they were adorable. Oh my God. They were so cute. So adorable. And so once I ordered it, I knew, okay, it's going to happen. They're going to get here on time. We're going to do it on this day because now that I've spent the money on the cap and gown, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let them just sit and <laughs> collect dust in the corner. So we we had that ready. We made little certificates for them. We invited the parents. So three parents came. We had a picnic lunch afterwards, pizza and chicken in my backyard. <laughs> we hosted it right in front of the rain garden, um, like in a family style. And the kids were sitting in front. We played pomp, pomp and circumstance as they were coming down the stairs. <laughs> And then on top of all of that, I found James's graduation cap and gown from he graduated this summer. And so I wore it as the um, what are they like as the dean, you know, like the person who's handing out the certificates is also wearing yeah. the cap and gown. So I had that on and I gave a little speech for Eva, each of them. So it was really it was really a big thing. And then, of course, so uh, Emery goes up first because we're D for Dorman and uh, we call him up and we're like, yay, Emery, great job. <laughs> and I swear to God, he turns around and he looks at everyone and he goes, shh. He shushes everyone. Remember I told you he's been doing that? When yeah. you, Whenever you say something or he does something and he knows I'm going to say something, he like <laughs> shushes me. He shushed the whole crowd. I lo- everybody lost it. We couldn't even handle him. He is just <laughs> too much, too much. And then one of the other little boys was a little bit shy. And so his mom came up with him. And then the other little boy who talks a, a lot and is not shy at all, he was like, yes, it's my turn. <laughs> like, I'm going to school. I'm going to do this. So it was really, really, really fun. I'm really glad we did it. And we got a, um, a bunch of it on video. So... Uh, I will link to some of the pictures if you haven't already seen it. And, anyway, you know, it's, it it's, a, it's a terrific way to get them excited yeah. about uh, the, the, the next phase of, of their learning experience, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. And so that's that's awesome. So there's that. Super there's cute. the moving on to school. But also it's an interesting thing of trying to figure out how much to tell kids and sometimes we do them a disservice by assuming that they can't handle but like we don't want to freak them out that they're so used to coming to me every single day and all of a sudden now they're never going to come back you know what i mean but we also can't avoid talking to them about it at all because they do know stuff you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so we're always trying to i am parents are uh, trying to to manage this fine line of giving kids the benefit of the doubt and access to information that they need that will help them but also not overwhelm them and i don't you sometimes we sometimes we don't do the right thing but i guess the whole point is just to try yeah but i i just think that you know something as simple as a little graduation yeah it gets them excited yeah you know and i think that at some point like during their next one i think is fifth grade is their next one or sixth grade no they should have i mean graduation but they'll have a moving up ceremony from preschool and then one from kindergarten like it's a whole thing so i mean they'll remember yeah you know oh this is familiar to me i remember you know yeah. Mommy Candace or whatever yeah, they yeah. call you, Auntie Candace. What do the what do the kids call you in your program? So Miss Candace, the yeah. ones who come in uh, around two years old, they're old enough and they call me Miss Candace. If they come in earlier, then they say Ma, right? And so everything is Ma, 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 and it's mostly because Lincoln and Emery are there and they're calling me Mom all day. And so the the little fifteen month old, she's always yelling Ma, and I I don't even. Um, Sometimes I don't register it because it's not my kid's voice. And so she'll say it like two or three times and bang on the table. And I'm like, oh, you're talking to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a, it's a thing. But um, so sometimes when they do that, uh, I know that it, there's a, um, a twinge if a parent hears that happen because you're dealing with like – you know, like the the feelings of guilt of having to send your kid to daycare in the first place. And then you hear them call somebody else mom. Like, I remember that when my kids did it to the daycare pr- provider. So when that happens, we I, I either ignore it or we say daytime mommy or, you know, something like that. <clears throat> because there's no even though they say that 
even at 15 months old, there's no confusion, or even at a year, the youngest one is, is just 12 or 13 months. There's no confusion when their actual mother walks to the door, oh, their actual ow. father walks Trust. to the door. <clears throat> they absolutely know who that person is. So I think you we, can see it. Their, their eyes light up mm-hmm. and, or they immediately do one of these. Right. They so. immediately light up or, you know, the fun, not so fun part for them is that they immediately melt down. And there's this whole, there's this whole thing that talks about why your kids behave, what feels like behaves, behave badly for you and behave so much better for everyone else. And the fact is that they know that they have to hold it together out in public or hopefully, I know there are some kids who are out there acting a fool out in public, but mostly they try to hold it together out in public. And then once they see mom or dad or whoever, they're like, Oh, I can let go now. Right. And then they just like fall to pieces but they've been doing such a good job all day. It's just when you get them after a long day of work, you're like, why couldn't you be good for me? Like you were being for Miss Candace. You know <laughs> what I you're mean? Not Candace. Right, exactly. <laughs> Your mom. And you know, that's it's a sense of uh, relief. Relief and trust and, and, and letting go. Yes. So yes. that's awesome. So it's good. It's fun to it's fun for me, right? It's fun for me to see. And also uh it's it's an interesting conversation that we I always have with parents when they when the kid does something right at the door. And I'm just like, I've never because they look at me and they're like, how do you deal with this? And I don't want to hurt their feelings. But I'm like, I've never seen him do that before. Like, he's never said that to me. Like, I I'm just as surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> like, I didn't know he could say that. <laughs> so sometimes I don't even have any answers because I'm just like, I didn't know that that was a thing that he did. He doesn't do that here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and they're like, Right. And they're like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Um, that's awesome. But on the flip side, I don't know if that's a flip side, but the, the thing I noticed this week that I, I think is, I think is great. It probably doesn't feel great to them in the, the moment, but um, most of my parents, uh, my clients have come in in the last week or so. I think as we're getting to the end of you know, when daycare is and we're at this point in summertime, they they have all come in and I can just see because I'm I'm familiar with what this face looks like. It was just like, take them, (laughs) take like (laughs) your turn (laughs) to tap in. I'm tapping out. And I really I think it's actually kind of cool that we have that I have this relationship with clients that I can see on their faces when they're having that day, like when that moment is happening and what's going on. And so then I just scoop up the kid. I'm like, everything's going to be good. Like, have a good day. You go. Come back later. We'll be here. (laughs) I I can see on their face. It's like he's been up since five. (laughs) And I totally know it because I have the same face from my own kids. But because the because it's different when other people's kids are coming and I know they will behave di- differently once mom or dad leaves, I can receive it differently. Yeah. Um, and so I, I do the best that I can to sort of um, um, make mom or dad feel better. But I think the best thing that I can do is just like scoop up the kid and send them on their way. It's like, go drink a coffee, take a breath, do whatever you have to do and come back and it'll be all, it'll all be good. So I really like that aspect of the, um, the client relationship that I have with my clients. So, well, that's good. Yeah. So, so what's on the agenda for today, Miss Candace? Okay. So I guess related to that, just being able to, to see when other people need something. Um, I, I don't know if that's the right way to say that. Anyway, this morning I got, a, I got this random phone call this morning and, um, I don't even know how to talk about this. It was so, it wasn't random because I didn't know who this person was, right? It's a it's a friend of mine from school, uh, and but we don't talk that often. We talk a lot on social media, on Facebook and whatnot, but we don't talk a lot over the phone. And and she called me this morning, like stressed out, stressed out and distraught. And I didn't know exactly what to do or what to say, but at the end of everything that she said to me, she said, like, I don't even know why I wanted to call you, but I thought you were the person. And I was like, that's cool, but I don't know what, like, I don't know why. And I realized that it was from something that I posted this morning about, uh, I don't know if you saw it, it said that moms or women often um, have to 
take a minute and they like cry in the car, in the kitchen, in the parking lot, wherever. And they just like let out a good cry. And then you sort of you just like pat it, wipe it off, open up your eyes, blow <laughs> It and you're just like, all right, that didn't happen. And you just walk back into the room, right? You go back you to your to desk. You have to like reset. You have to reset. You go back to your desk and it's like nothing happened. And people around don't know anything happened. And the, pa- the, the point is that we're under so much stress and we don't have a way to let it out that we like we have to pretend like everything is OK. Mm-hmm. And that women in general are able to like hold on to a lot of stuff. And feel all of those big things, but not let anybody know because we're not supposed to. And they're you know huge, I mean? they're right? Huge, they're huge. And so the the thing that that I was thinking about is like, I I didn't know she was going through anything, right? And I wasn't thinking about her particularly when I posted that, but when I saw it, it's not that I cried today or yesterday, but I have done that before. And so it felt really real to me. And I thought, if it feels real to me, it must feel real to somebody else. And like legit this morning, it spoke directly to her. And it just made me think that sometimes when like I'm living my life and I I told you the other week that um, James thinks I'm on social media too much and like I'm posting too many things and, and whatnot. But I'm just like the people that I talk to and the people that are around me are all going through all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And the things that I post and the things that I talk about on the show are, are mostly to let people know that the thing that they're going through is not unique, unique to them. It's yeah. not unique to them. And, and that's the other important thing is like, we never know what someone else is going through mm-hmm. because they're not going to show you their worst side. Right. You know, it's human nature to sort of kind of mask things and keep it going so that people think that everything is okay. But we never know mm-hmm. what's going on in someone else's life. So when someone comes to you and they're a little frazzled, be nice. Be nice. Because, you know, you could be the difference between them completely losing it. Right. <laughs> Or snapping back to it and saying, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all they need is just that one person to say, hey, you got this. Right, right. You know? And that you just, you don't know who that person is. So Mm -hmm. sometimes we talk a lot. I know you and I talk a lot about social media and technology and those sort of things. Mm-hmm. And we talk about how free we are with information on online or just the kinds of things that we're talking about. And most of it is foolishness, but a good amount of it is, is real. And I think, I think some of the memes that go viral the most is because they're so like, they're so universal to everyone. And they're relatable. They're so relatable. So this thing that I posted this morning said, you'd be surprised by how many times a woman sits in her car or in the shower or in the laundry room or at the sink and quickly cries because she's so stressed. Because when she shows her face again, she looks untouched and unbothered, manages to sport a beautiful smile and carries on like she's fine. Women are some of the most resilient creatures appreciate them and this is from tamaya elizabeth i don't know who that is but tamaya like that shit spoke to me when i saw it this morning or to mia i don't know how to say it. i'm sorry i'm laughing because i just saw another thing that you had posted on your website what is it and i'm dying it goes like being a parent isn't just a job it's a way of life like coal mining or deep sea fishing or ice road trucking really any job that's actively trying to kill you actively <laughs> trying to kill you <laughs> So there's the thing is like some of, like not everything is is heavy yeah. but it's all real like my kids are actively trying to kill me at any given point of the day. <laughs> Emery was on top of my face um, uh, earlier. Um Lincoln was hugging me so tight around my neck. I was like I cannot breathe. Please stop doing this to me. <laughs> I literally said to them today I was like um you were hurting me. <laughs> like you're please stop hurting me. Please sit down because you're hurting me. Um, and they don't care. They just, you know, it's they just keep at it. We're just supposed to be able to it. jump all over you and play cars on your face. And exactly. that's why my mother said that my little brother, my oldest brother used to do with her. Mm-hmm. He would literally like, and ride right. cars all over her face. And she would just sit there and just whatever. You if just that's gotta, your thing. Right. If that's your thing. <sighs> to so, a certain point. Right. Because <laughs> we all have our breaking points. That's like, right. Most of the time I feel at not most of the time, sometimes I get to a point at the end of the day or on a Thursday, you know, the, towards the end of the week yeah. where I'm just like, don't touch me. I don't need a single other finger. I just don't come anywhere near me. Nobody, nobody breathe on me. Please back away slowly, quietly. 
turn off the light. You know, just like, like James walks into the house and I just quietly walk right up the stairs and close the door. Like I just cannot handle another second. But I have all of these different ways that I have an outlet, right? Like I have yeah. this show. I have, I'm in like, 10 different group chats with different sets of moms for any need that I have. There's a group of people who are, are, are talking about that stuff. Um, I have a weekend coming up where I'm going to spend with a couple mom friends from high school that, uh, we all have with three moms and five sons. And so we're going to the lake this weekend. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to, it gets better each year because the boys are getting older, but, I have all of these outlets and I am realizing and I recognize that not everyone has that, right? Yeah. A lot of people are living in places far away from family, far away from home, places where they don't, they don't know anybody yet or they haven't made friends yet or they don't find it easy to make friends or they're in, in, you know, whatever the circumstances or they have children with special needs and that isolates parents or they have uh, several children, which can isolate parents or they only have one and they don't, you know, they don't know what they're doing. Like most of us don't, but that feels isolating. Um, it's, there's so many ways that people can feel all alone, even in the midst of a lot of people. And I recognize that I have a lot of different ways to, to like tap in to what I need and that not everybody has that. So well, I mean, when I get a phone you, call in the morning, yeah. like I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah, But you always say it does take a village, mm -hmm. you know, and having the fact that she knew that she could call mm -hmm. you, you know, that she knew she had to call you. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I think so. And I could, I was, I was floored, right. I'm floored and I, and I don't want to make it about me. Right. But I can't help it. Um, but, like, no, it's but, not but about me. This is me, your right? show. And so, yeah, you can make it about you it about in this me. moment. No, because I, it felt good because I always think that nobody's listening or yeah. it's not really a big deal. Or, um, you know, James says, stop saying things are so hard. They're not hard. And I was like, actually, things are kind of friggin' hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a little bit hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was really good as um, feedback and as a confidence booster that the things that I'm talking about here or the things that I'm bringing up and like calling attention to are resonating with the people, especially people that I care about. And that's the whole the whole point of of all of it. So I so I'm I'm really glad that she called. I really hope that she um, reaches out to people that she needs to to get the kind of support that she needs because I'm not actually a therapist but what it meant like as I hung up with her and spent the rest of the day kind of thinking a little bit about what what she's going through it made me think a lot about remember we were talking about Abraham Hicks last week That's and right. the vibrational energy mm -hmm. and um and like the law of attraction and so something that I told her and, um, you know, working through myself, I don't have it all together, but is that sometimes when something bad happens and I do it, I still do it. So I'm, I'm really working on not doing it. When something bad happens, we're so enraged by it and we're so upset by it. We're so devastated. And, you know, all of those words that mean that something bad has happened and you're crushed and you, you feel betrayed. You're so betrayed by this bad thing that happens that you rehash it over and over again. Either you tell the story over and over again until you actually get really good at telling the story or you think about it over and over again. And you think about all the things that like you like, did I do something? Is this my fault? Mm -hmm. But you just tell the story over and over again. And it made me think about the conversation with Mubaraka. I was and the just fact, about to say that. Right? Stop, get out of my brain. Well, <laughs> the fact that mm -hmm. you're, you're telling the story and I think we tell ourselves that if we talk about things enough, get it off of our chest, that it will make us feel better. Mm -hmm. But you're actually like traumatizing and re-traumatizing yourself over and over again. Every time you think about the situation, every time you tell the story, every time you like dig in and like live in that space. You're hearing it. Oh, you're you, hearing you're it. You're saying it. You're hearing it. You're feeling it. You're over and over and over again. And that kind of tra trauma and stress, your body doesn't, your body and your brain don't know that it happened last week when you first told the story. Mm -hmm. It thinks it's happening to you. 
all over again. All over again, every time. And it manifests it. physically because then exactly. you start getting stressed, you start getting irritable, mm-hmm. tired. Stress, cortisol, like all yeah. of those things. I'm not even a doctor, but I know like stress and cortisol and and um, illness, like all of those things are connected. And so I was taking this opportunity today to tell myself and to tell my friend that I'm I'm glad that you told that you felt you wanted to tell me, but I think that you should take some time now to like stop telling that story, right? Stop telling that story and figure out what the new story is going to be. What is the new thing that like, where are you going to go from here? Change. How are you? Yeah. How, like, what is your next step? I don't know what it's like. I don't think there's a should. I don't think there's a, it could be anything. It could be anything. Anything that's not what's Mm re-traumatizing you can set you on the right path. Exactly. Exactly. And and physically, mentally, emotionally, all of those things and whatever has happened, which usually is something somebody did to you, right? You can't fix them. Mm -hmm. You can't make them fix themselves. You can't make them tell the truth. You can't make them come to you be better. You have no control over them. All you have control over is yourself. That's right. And so you think you have to think about about yourself and what is going to make you feel better in this moment. One, because you deserve to feel better, especially if someone's being an asshole to you. Like you shouldn't they shouldn't be an asshole to you and then you also feel bad. Like and then you're also broken after that. You know what I mean? And if you're a parent and you've got little kids that you're thinking about, like you've got to figure out a way to be strong and get past it for them too. You know what I mean? So I, I I don't know where we go from that because it's a catch 22, right? Mm -hmm. Because first of all, something happens. You have to say something. Yes. We're constantly telling our kids, if you see something, say Say something, something. (laughs) if something happens to you, tell someone, Mm -hmm. but once you say it, you know, and 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 it's been handled or taken care of, or it's no longer a physical, mental, or emotional threat. Move on, mm-hmm. because that constant repetitiveness mm-hmm. of saying it out loud makes you remanifest that whole thing physically, emotionally, and spiritually all over again, over and over and over again. And the thing you say about the sort of culturally, right? We we haven't. We haven't gotten to a good place in our culture on how to deal with stress and how to deal with trauma and things and the way that people treat us to make us feel bad. Right. Or even just in what I said, in dealing in in dealing with the way that people treat us, that makes us feel bad. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that I've been listening to and and turning towards is that. Like, don't give people that sort of power over you. That's right. Obviously, if somebody physically hurts you, that's a thing, right? But beyond that, you have to be in control of your own happiness. And we can't, we can't rely on our spouse or our sibling or our mom or whoever's. We can't rely on them to make us happy because they should be busy trying to figure out how to make themselves happy. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, uh, episode of Jada Pinkett Smith's show, The Red, the Red Ta- Table. Table, where her and Will Smith were talking about like not being responsible for each other's happiness mm-hmm. and that it wasn't until they realized that that they could move forward and actually be happy. If you're so focused on I'm not happy unless he makes me happy or like she's my whole world, my whole reason for living, like I can't go on another breath without them. Like, that's a lot of pressure. (laughs) I remember the one episode. That's a lot of pressure for another person. Where she was talking about, on one of her birthdays, Will threw her a party. And, you know, it was all about him. Yes. And not about her. And and she sort of kind of, like, lost it. Yeah. uh, Per se. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know where I was going with that. But it just just goes to show you, like, when when you are engaging with someone else Mm -hmm. other than yourself, it's like you don't physically... Or emotionally, you can elicit an emotional response, but you're not emotionally responsible for what that person goes through. Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of people tend to forget that. And that's mm-hmm. very common in black and brown families. Mm-hmm. And also getting help, mm-hmm. right? Seeing someone like a therapist uh, or someone that you can sit down and talk to that's outside of the situation you you see that as a negative thing. We mm-hmm. do. It's we very do. common in our cultures yeah, to, com- to see that. I think it's common in our culture, but I think it's common American culture, like culturally um, for us. 
yes, I think it's a black and brown thing too, but I think that's because it's all of us, this codependency and the way that we see, you know, love play out in movies, in happily ever afters and, you know, that my life didn't start until I found this person, yeah. right? Or I can't, or all the movies when the breakup happens, there's like, distraught despair and ice cream like it's a whole thing for like 30 minutes you are know you what kidding I mean? me i'm like i'm single and i'm literally i fight with my every time i go on a date the first three things i think about is like how am i gonna sleep next to this person because <laughs> i'm i'm so stingy with my bed that's number one how is this person going to work in my space mm-hmm. right because now you have to share that and am i even cut out for this <laughs> So I'm not ta- I'm not thinking about oh my god I'm I need to get with someone otherwise I'm not complete. I'm thinking about all the ways that I shouldn't be with someone because it's all about me. But that's because you're grown now and you've had some life experience. Oh. Most most people who are starting oh. out, right? Mm. You're you're growing up with the Disney fairy tale or you're growing up with the rom com thing. Um, or you had a breakup and now you're like, how, or you've been in a relationship for a long time and now you've broken up and how the heck am I going to get out dating? I have a friend now who's, who just got divorced and she's got two kids and she's like, I, I Tinder didn't exist when I started dating. Like, I don't know how that works. And I don't know how that works. Like, I don't know what I would do if I was put in that situation. I think you figure it out, but there's this whole, um, codependency, like culture of, of dependency and codependency that we have. And until we learn how to uh, focus on ourselves, not in a um, stingy way, because those are the things. If you say you're focusing on yourself, then people will say that you're selfish and you're stingy and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But no, but it's important. Focus on yourself in a in a healthy way yeah. so that when you present yourself to another person, you're fully complete. You know, you 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 present a more complete version of yourself so that you're not looking for them to complete you you know what but i mean it, it, but if you're already in a relationship and you feel like you know your whole life revolves around this other person it is important to recognize that you need to be at 100% mm-hmm. you need to be right with yourself with your inner core who you are as a person before you could ever support your partner emotionally physically uh and and Mentally. Mentally, mm-hmm. in any capacity. Or and, that they can support you. In the, in you know the, what I mean? Correct. Um, so I think sometimes we we only focus on the um, the thing that our, we think that that person is lacking, and we forget that we've put a lot of pressure on them when they're already struggling. Right. And so that's when people turn, you know, they, they turn and run, or they turn to some sort of um, thing on the side that they may not have done before yeah. which again is not uh, as soon it's as i said excuse. that it sounds like blame right i'm not yeah. putting blame on anyone but we have to to like i i keep thinking lately um that i'm lacking confidence in some some places like i don't think that i'm doing such a great job at this or i could i could be doing better you're always like i could be doing better and while nobody is perfect and there's always room for growth you probably are doing great you know what i mean but but even when you are doing great you feel like you have to say i'm not and i'm not like i'm i'm not doing as well as i could or i should or you always have to you always have to like bring yourself down because that's what we think we're supposed to do yeah. but, but we're not positive reinforcers are really do a really good number on you mm-hmm. like they really set your aura they set your your who you are from inside out and mm-hmm. then when you go out into the world people gravitate towards mm-hmm. that we so talked about that last, yeah. i don't know when we did but we talked about that confidence attracting confidence that was last week that was last week yeah. it was like forever ago i, I don't even like, know what day yeah, it is I know, except that i'm here insane. so it must be thursday you know so so we're talking about this whole you know being whole with with oneself before you could engage with someone on an emotional level can we talk about some examples of what we can do to to fix ourselves or or try to be good with ourselves? Yeah, so I'm not. I, I, we're I not therapists. Know. We're not I'm therapists. Just saying, like you know, for me, I think um, <laughs> one of the most important time th- things that I think any relationship needs, and this is my opinion, is <laughs> me time. Right? Mm. You need to be able to, like, for example, be honest in wanting to do the things that you love. 
one of the biggest things that I see that people do all the time when they get together is, oh, I, I no longer like that. I no longer do that. Mm, we, we don't like that. We, it becomes, right, it becomes this thing. No, I mean, if you like pottery and it is your passion, find time in the midst of this union, in the midst of this unity to do the things that you love because they keep you grounded mm. and they keep you who you are. And chances are some of the things that that other individual loved about you or fell in love with was the fact that you love something so much. Mm. Don't give those things up. That's important. That I think important. that is important. I'm, I'm finding time now. Oh, I'm, I'm learning how to um, meditate. I mm -hmm. used to think it was foolishness, but I've even, I've even got the kids meditating at night. <laughs> we put on Alexa. I'm like, Alexa play meditation for sleep. And me, me and the two boys are laying in our, in my bed. Cause they are, they refuse to go in their own bed. And we're all three of us are laying with our heads on the pillow, arms, <laughs> like, fingers up, toes up to the sky. And then, um, Emery turns over and I go, Emery, close your eyes. And he looks at me and then he looks over at Lincoln and Lincoln looks at me and like, like it's a whole thing, but yeah. we're practicing, right? We're practicing being calm and Lincoln goes, close your eyes, Emery, close your eyes. <laughs> like it's a, it's a thing, yeah. but we're practicing it, right? You got to start somewhere. And it's just about like taking a moment to quiet your mind. And I have tried this several times and it's really hard to quiet your mind. Of course it it's is. It's really hard to shut off, especially if you've got a lot of negative talk, a lot of worry, a lot of stress, like all of that stuff. As soon as it's quiet, that's the time I start running the list of that's all the right. things I have to do or all mm -hmm. the things I didn't do or whatever. When you're actually supposed to be being quiet. You're like, did I, did I put the clothes in the dryer? Exactly. I just had to, I just had to do the laundry again today because I put it in the laundry and then I left it there for a day. And in this heat, shit smelled like milk dew. <laughs> and I just start all over again and I was no. so upset. So now I'm, I'm remembering to put on timers on Alexa when I set it off, but that's not neither here or there. What I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a little bit, um, as we're talking about this is maybe what to do if you're in a relationship and you're struggling, right. And you're w wondering if this is right or if I should like, if we should break up or if we should like what, and I don't, I don't know what the answer is because I'm not in that situation right now. And I don't know exactly how I would feel but like, it's all good and well for me to say it now. Cause I'm happy. Oh, you should just work through it and like fight for what you want to fight for. But in but that the also moment, depends on what you're trying to work that through. That in the moment when you figure out what you're trying to work through and you're trying to see through red and you're trying to see through rage, that you 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 might just need a minute, right? I think that's why separation is a is a thing. It's you don't have to get divorced right away. You don't have to separate and be separated forever. But if you're so um if you're so mad and you're so on top of each other that you're mad, maybe you do need a minute. And again, doesn't mean that you're getting divorced. It just means that you need a minute apart to to remember who you are, uh -huh. who you were, so that you can work on yourselves and then come back together good. And I've I've met several couples who had have like a five year break <laughs> in the middle or have a six month break in the middle and then have been married for 25 years yeah. after that. So again, I'm not encouraging separation. I'm not encouraging divorce, but I'm also not discouraging it. I, I was talking to James a little bit about it and he was like, well, you just fight for your relationship all the time. And I was like, I'm not saying that you're not supposed that you're to You're not fighting, you're but not, you also need me time. You also need me time. And then you have <coughs> to get to a point where you decide where it should be okay for you to decide that yes, this is worth moving forward or no, no it's not. And that should also be okay. You should when fight you have, for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. See, one, then, of the, one of the things I've always said is, listen, when you're calm and collected and you're not arguing, mm -hmm. take time and not that you're jinxing yourself or you're setting yourself up for failure. You need to take time to understand what your limits are. What are the red lines? Mm -hmm. And just like you would when you're at work and there's a fire drill and you walk out the building and then you go walk back in and sit <laughs> down, this scenario in your head, constantly playing it out, and I'm not saying stre stress yourself over this, but knowing what your limits are will help you resolve issues when it comes, when, when, if they get there, uh, because you already know and you've had that drill 
in your head of what I'm not going to tolerate and what I am going to tolerate and what I can deal with. And so then you know what your limits are and it helps you make that make your decision easier as to whether or not you want to go forward with this relationship or not. You know, like people need to have some sort of standard as to what they expect. And I think setting expectations mm. when you're first getting to know each other is also very important. Here's what I think I would like to see my life as. Uh, what do you see your life as? Do we match? Do we... Is it something, are, are we on the same page? Mm-hmm. And even if you don't like the same things, you can still find many common things to be mm-hmm. on the same page. But you have to know what your limits are, what absolutely you won't tolerate. Yeah. I wonder if that that works differently at the start of a relationship, right? As opposed to when you're deep in one, right? Like when you're already married, then when you have kids, when you like. Well, going into a relationship, it's easy. I'm going to say X, Y, Z. But once you're in the. (laughs) No, but I mean, even when you're past. No, but when, even when you're past that, because there's an, there's a natural, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, it's probably not a bell curve because you don't want to, you don't end your marriage in flames, but there's this natural (laughs) progression, right? Of, of relationships where it's all the um all the butterflies and stuff at the beginning and everything is great and you can't be apart and then you get together and then you're like mm, I still kind of like you but then you need time and like there's a natural progression to relationship that doesn't always end in divorce but it's just different from when you start and all the um I always forget what they're called the feel goods all the the the, the butterflies the butterflies there's a yeah. science name for that stuff but anyway there is um where was I going with that? Oh, so when you're the whole thing with standards, I feel like it's a it's a hard line that you can't take in marriage. Like I, I feel I feel like the lines aren't hard in marriage. People might think that like infidelity or drug use or something like that, that those are hard lines. If if my wife cheats on me, I'm going to leave her and that's just going to be it. Or if my husband like ODs like I'm going to leave him and that's just going to be it. But I don't think that lines are hard when you are already married. married. Obviously there there's, there's, you know, different types of, of, of standards that you can set. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking, for example, let's say I'm with someone and we're together for 15 years. And throughout all of this, I said, listen, if you end up being some freaking serial killer, okay, that I didn't know. All right, murder is a hard line. That's a hard line for me, right? And so I know that if you, for I'm whatever saying, like, reason, it's not a hard line for me. It's a hard line for everybody. All right, fine. Actually, no, it's not because you've got people that go and get married to murderers. There are on death, on death row. row. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. You have to have okay. <laughs> think of situations that could happen. Okay, what I can and cannot tolerate. Right. I can't handle murder. I can't FYI. handle murder. So therefore, you know, if you kill someone purposely, not accidentally, <laughs> if you purposely go out there and kill someone, those that- divorce papers are in the mail next week. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you're going to be getting them on death row, but oh no, it's God. not happening. You know, but like you said, infidelity is such a it's such a, a weird wheel to try to navigate because you know you have those feelings of feeling betrayed but you can some people can get over those mm-hmm. and forgive and when I, and we talk about forgiveness it's also um ingrained to us from a religious perspective but from a societal perspective when we talk about forgiveness you know some people can and some people can't yeah. and so mm. I can forgive, but I can't forget. That means you didn't forgive. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it's it's a catch-22. But yeah, but there yeah. are a lot of things that I can say to myself. All of that means that like I don't have any answers. Um, we're, we're all trying to figure it out as we go along. And what's, what I'm learning to, to find, um, to, to make important is to remember – Remember what it is that I'm doing in the situation and to stay on my side of the fence. I remember that analogy in work like several years back. A relationship is like tennis, right? You're on your side and they're on their side. And all you can do is talk about the facts of what happened and how they made you feel. You can't cross over the 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 fence and say and you did this because you wanted me to feel or like you meant th- when you said this you meant this like you have no idea what that person meant even in 
like addiction or infidelity or um or and abuse of any kind or whatever like you don't know what that person meant all you can do is is respond to the to the the way you felt about the factual thing that happened when you did this i felt this way and and likewise you you can't make the other person stop doing the thing that's hurting you or stop doing the thing that you find that you've you're allowing yourself to be hurt by, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm trying to come back to that all the time is that while it's not your fault, it's your fault. You know what I mean? Like it's a weird thing because nobody, especially when you're, you're feeling wronged and betrayed, nobody wants to hear it's my fault. It's not my fault that they, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, they did that to blah, blah, blah. But what, what is the thing that you can control in that scenario? And, and how can you take ownership like, of take what ownership you... and take some of the control so that you don't sink as low as that person is wherever they're going? And even if they're not thinking of something that you just don't like that they do, which, by the way, when you're in a relationship, a lot of the things that you liked about a person usually end up being the things that you hate the most after a while. So, um, you know, you really just have to. It's like, why you breathe so hard? Right? It's like, I'm trying to watch a movie. And I'm like. Yeah, we used to talk for like two hours on the phone all the time when we first met. But it's like, I'm trying to watch a movie. I don't want to hear you lip right here (laughs) while I'm trying to watch my movie. You still talking? (laughs) So, I I mean, there's (laughs) there's a lot of things, you know. Okay, emotions and people change. uh, Your reaction to things change. So, like Candace has said, it's important to recognize that you're changing. But also keep in mind that you yourself have control of what you do and how you react to that change. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you also have control of your emotions, um, or at least should have. Um, but if you know, if you find yourself not being in control of those, sometimes taking a break mm-hmm. is the ideal thing to do because then you can sort of kind of recheck yourself and sort of kind of refocus what the important things are in your life. And then you go and you confront what's bothering you uh, in a different state of mind. And sometimes that helps you make better decisions. Like not like divorcing the the murder, like (laughs) right off the bat. Right. Right. Um, So anyway, that's, that's what I was thinking about. Well, because it happened today. It happened to me today. (laughs) And, and again, I just kept thinking, like, it's all well and good for me to, to to have the ideas that I have now because I'm in a situation that's not like that, right? Like, I'm not in a bad situation. But as and I said before, you're thinking... You, you're, you're thinking, thinking ahead, ahead, right? So I am hopeful that that now that I've ha- I have, like, some clear thoughts, that I'll be able to remember these things <laughs> at some point. When you're if enraged. I ever am enraged. I don't get enraged yet, <laughs> Um, so for those of us listening who are in a good place, this is probably a good time to think about how you handle difficult situations, right? And how you would handle them. And for those of us listening who might be in a difficult place, um, take some time to think about how, how you are handling the situation. And if you are, um, contributing to your own stress, in the way that you are handling the situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And try very hard not to allow something that someone else did um, traumatize you over and over again. And, and at some point take, take like take your power and, and like maybe not walk away from it, but like at least turn around from it. <laughs> Just like take a step, take a break, um, take a breath and take care of you and let that person um, do whatever they need to do on their own terms, on their own time uh, to fix themselves so that they can come back to you and you then decide if you still want them or like you both decide if you still want it, but you come at a different at a different point because mm-hmm. otherwise you'll never like you'll never get there. You'll never you'll never have any closure over the, the situation that started the problem mm-hmm. and then you'll just feel broken. Don't be that one person in the relationship. Man, I can't stand, but the D is so good. Oh, my God. Don't be that person. You know, it's like, uh, it's like, I, I cannot, I cannot, but the D is so good. I can't imagine that. Like, I can't. Like. <laughs> I can't. Im- I, I hear it so often. Really? Like, even, like, uh, on on my side in relationships, like, you know, dude, I, I can't, but it's just so good. It's like, 
Mm. I cannot, but it's so good. I guess so that's good. a conversation for another yeah. day that, I, I mean, like, what are you willing to put up with? Like, like seriously. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Murder, perhaps? <laughs> Murder. There's so much around uh, in this world. Like, yeah. you, you don't have to marry a murderer. Yeah. Um, where did that just went? <laughs> that just went dark for a second. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sure there's a show on, on AMC called, like, Married to Death Row or some shit. Well, no, there was that um, I Heart something, like, I Heart Zombie or something. Where there was a movie out where the girl is falling, the kid is falling in love with a girl who's a zombie, mm. and the more they she shows love, or oh yeah, I actually like to, that movie. Yeah, it was That's pretty not the cute. Same thing though. I don't know, but it's marrying death, I suppose. <laughs> Look, I just justified this girl like hooking up with a zombie, but I did like that movie. Um, <laughs> It's called, his name is R in the movie, and her name is Julie, I think. It's a Romeo and Juliet story, but... But, but, but they're zombies. zombies, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's called I Heart Zombies. Something, some, some foolishness. I actually really like that movie. <laughs> I cannot. It's foolishness. That's not the same. No, it's not. At least I don't think it's the same. <laughs> I'm not convinced. Okay, let's, let's wrap up. Oh. Um, oh, I don't have a thing. Oh, get your bags. Uh, get your bags. Yes. <laughs> I feel delirious. I feel delirious. Duh. Okay. Avoid so, having to pay 10 cents. Get your bags, people. Get your bags. So the mom's hard tip of the week is to buy a pack of bags. Like, get your stash of bags and put them in your car or in your wherever and um, try some of those little ones. They have some bags now that fold up into themselves so that they're really tiny and try to keep them in your purse because I feel like I'm going to get caught out. And thankfully, I'm a suburban mom, so I'm I'm always in my car. Yeah. But like, if you're a city girl and you're outside and you're trying to buy like, ain't nobody got time like, to like pads and cigarettes. Yeah. And you, <laughs> you might actually spend the extra ten cents on the bag. I will tell you this though: up. if you want to get it all done and get like a nice, hefty, super strong bag, there's no better bags for that crap because you can fit so much stuff in it than IKEA. IKEA. Bags. IKEA. <laughs> Go to IKEA and grab one of yourself. Grab yourself one of those blue bags. With two of those, you could probably take an entire grocery, grocery and bring it and in the put house it home. and I mean, leave you, it in the car. But you won't be able to pick it up, so maybe like <laughs> three of them, three or four of them. Well, they have the short straps, so you have you can, you can have your little helpers hold the short straps while you pull from the long straps. Mm, and then all the groceries will be on the all on of the, the place, street, right? <laughs> Get home. But definitely, that's that's ten cents <sighs> wealth. Let me tell you, you can't destroy those things. Mm-mm. There's I've, nothing yeah. you can do. I don't know what they use to make them, but you can't destroy them. It's great. It's great. Well, so. if you have any tips, if you're out there listening and you're in Connecticut or in any of the other states that have um, pseudo banned plastic bags, tell us what your tips are on how to keep yourself um, ready. Or if you just dole out the ten cents, because we'll see. We'll see in the next couple months if it's actually working. Because like, I don't always recycle my cans. And I'm just like, five cents, mm, I'm all right. I have somebody that actually comes to pick them up. I know, so. I know. So I'm hopeful that this will help that the bag, because the bag situation is out of control. Although I stand by, I, I'm not contributing to the bag situation because my bags are all under my sink. I'm proud of you. Like, my bags are not in the ocean. My bags are all under the sink. I agree. Mine too. <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much for joining us. As always, we are here. We are everywhere where you listen to podcasts. That's right. um, like and rate the show. Share the show. Share the Facebook thing, whatever this thing is called. You know, I don't do the Facebook. I'm like on social media all the time, but I don't. Facebook Live. Yes, it's Facebook Live. Let me stop lying. I know how to do Facebook. I still don't know how to do Instagram. I just had to get shown how to do something on Instagram. And it turned out that I was using the wrong app. Like I had some old lady app from of course six you months ago that like, <laughs> had never been updated. And so I couldn't figure something out. And she's like, why does it look like that? I said, listen. Listen, Linda. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I going with that? Come back next week and every week. Bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at breezymomspodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.